unto him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Singing blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Singing blessing and glory and honor and power forever. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. To him who sits on the throne and unto the Lamb. Singing blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Singing blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Amen. Welcome to New Life in Christ Christian Center broadcast. My name is Gerald Walton, Gerald B. Walton. I am the elder and pastor of New Life in Christ Christian Center, and we welcome you with open arms to be with us today. Thank you. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you and shine his face upon you and give you peace. Amen. Well, we have a great message today, and I'd like to first read this prayer over your lives, who's ever viewing, and may the Lord richly bless you with this prayer. And it's from, taken from Colossians chapter 1, verse 9 through 14. I'm going to read this prayer into your lives. It says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness giving thanks unto the Father which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance in the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. May God bless you with the reading of that prayer for your life. Well, we thank God that we're here today, and we're here t for, for a purpose. Our purpose for the broadcast is that Jesus be exalted and that we bless his holy name. Amen. So we're here to serve you and minister you the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ and his kingdom. Hallelujah. For it is the gospel of the kingdom of God and of his Christ. So thank you today. Um, I want to encourage you and give you a word of exhortation today. Because um, I'm a builder and I want to build you up in Christ. I really do. In Isaiah 40, 31, chapter 40, verse 31, it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. And they shall walk and faint not. May God bless you. As you wait upon the Lord, your strength will be renewed like an eagle. Amen. And you won't be weary. And you, won't, and you will not faint. Amen. So God bless you. God richly bless you today. Well, today's message 
is on the gospel of the kingdom of God, the gospel of the kingdom of God. And today uh, we're going to be talking about the joy of the Lord, the joy of the Lord. And the Bible says the joy of the Lord is your strength. But in the kingdom of our God, let's go to Romans 14 and 17. The other two uh, times that we met, we talked about the righteousness of God and the peace of God. Today we're going to talk about the joy of the Lord. But we get this passage from this scripture and it says in Romans 14, oh, let me get it here, 14 verse 17. If you have your Bibles, it says, follow along with us. It says, for the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom of God is about. It's about God's righteousness, God's peace, and God's joy in the spirit, in the Holy Ghost. Amen. And God wants us to understand and live in the kingdom. Now, I'm the church. I'm the temple of the living God, Jesus Christ. But the kingdom of God is where Christ is king over his domain. It's the government of God. It's the rule of God. It's the reign of God. And it is to influence the way we live as children of God, sons of God, sons and daughters of God. Today, we're going to talk about the joy of the Lord in the kingdom of our God. Because joy comes from God. I'm not talking about the joy that the, the man uh, uh, defined. Joy is God's. He, it belongs to him. He created it. Amen. And he wants us to have his joy. Amen. Amen. So joy means cheer, happiness, gladness. Gladness of heart and delight. Hallelujah. Delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. Amen. So joy comes from God. He is the God of joy. In the last two messages, we recognize that joy belongs to God. Peace belongs to God. Love belongs to God. Power belongs to God. Righteousness belongs to God. It is who God is. And God is love, and, and joy comes out of love. Peace comes out of God's love. God gives you, when he gives you his son, he gave you the gift to love. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth upon him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So God is the God of joy, and joy arises from the reconciliation and God's favor through Jesus Christ. When Jesus died on the cross and he said to his father, the work is finished. We are offsprings to receive what Christ did on the cross and begin to receive what God has given us because we have been restored and reconciled to the father by Jesus. Joy means to celebrate and rejoice. The joy of the Lord means to celebrate and rejoice. So we're going to read some passages of scripture to explain. Hopefully this will explain to you the joy of the Lord and that joy comes from God. And he, his will is for you to have it. 24-7. <laughs> yes. Even when things don't go right. We'll talk about that. Philippians, we'll go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 4, about the joy of the Lord. In Philippians uh, chapter 4, verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. And rejoicing has to do with joy. Uh, uh, rejoice is a is similitude of joy when you rejoice. And the will of God is that we rejoice in the Lord always. And that your spirit man uh, 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 will it'll click in anytime. You click it in, joy. 
Amen. And because joy is unspeakable. The joy of the Lord is unspeakable and full of his glory. And if we go to 1 Thessalonians 5.16, we'll read the will of God for you to have joy in this passage of scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. It says, rejoice evermore. Rejoice evermore. In this song, this sister, dear sister, uh, Norma Jean Brown, bless her heart, love her dearly. Uh, uh, she led us in the, to the song. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. What are we rejoicing about? The finished works of Christ. God redeeming us through Jesus. We have an eternal life. We're knowing and having a relationship and fellowship with God and the truth of our Father's love for his, for his children and for mankind. That's why we can rejoice. That's the gospel. The truth of his love. Amen. So saints, we need to get out and tell about the truth of God's love. And that it be a joy to do. Amen. Amen. So joy is good for your spirit. In Nehemiah 8, verse 10, it says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. If you have joy, you have strength. Now let me explain a little bit about that from, from my perception and, and the knowledge and experience that I have. When you are oppressed, depressed, sad it it weakens you it weakens your immune system it weakens your thinking processes it's not good at all they, some people call it negative energy it is negative and it can try to drain you but when you have god's joy we have right his righteousness and his peace you know that you are the righteousness of god and you're right standing with him and you have the peace of God. And now today's message, you have his joy. Hallelujah. It is your strength. So Nehemiah, Old Testament, chapter 8, verse 10 says, The joy of the Lord is your strength. It is another sister. Oh, my God. Uh, Macmillan, I believe. But we used to sing this song. If you have joy, you will leap for it. If you have joy, you will leap for it. <laughs> and, he, and she was teaching the young kids in this bus ministry that I used to be a part of years ago. But I was like a child. I had childlike faith then with them. And I was receiving it too. If you have joy, you will leap for it. Amen. You want to have that joy no long, no matter how old you get. You can be 90. Have, keep that joy. Guard your heart and keep that joy because it comes from God and he wants you to have it and he wants you to live by it. He wants it to remain in you, Jesus said to the disciples, that his joy remain in them. Amen. So I know I'm prophesying. May the joy of the Lord remain in you. Amen. Remain means to be steadfast, guard it, keep it. Amen. Amen. And pursue it. Yes. So joy is having faith in God's word, even when things don't go like they should. It is faith and by faith that you have the joy of the Lord. It's by faith. So sometimes you might not feel, feel, you know, feel like joy. But I still have joy. He gave it to me. It's in the spirit. And I begin to sing psalms and hymns and melody unto the Lord. I sing songs of deliverance because I got joy. When I think about his goodness and what he's done for me. And that's what you do. You think about his goodness and what he's done for you. So that when you in a tight situation or a tight jam, you start thinking about him. And you start focusing on him. And then you start praising and worshiping him and all the other stuff that means ha it has no effect. Matter of fact, 
it, it, we bring it down into its right place, which is under our feet, amen. <laughs> which is under our feet, amen. And keep it down, subdue it, amen. Conquer, you say, why I'm talking these words? Because God says they do all these things with more than conquerors. And count it all joy when you fall into divers, to all trials and divers temptations and let the trial of your faith work as patient and let patience have its perfect work. So when it comes, when things don't seem as though they should, when it comes, still embrace joy and be patient, which means endure. It'll, by, it'll bypass. But while you wait for it to bypass, let the joy of the Lord, let the praise of God, amen. Send up praises, minister to God, and all this other little stuff will be other little stuff. When you magnify him with joy, amen. Because if you're gonna look at the mountain and, and look at the problem, then God doesn't have your attention. God wants your attention even when you go through things, amen. And he wants you to have his joy. Sing, sing praises unto God, amen. So joy is a benefit in God's kingdom. And that's why it says so. The kingdom of God is not in food or drink, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost, amen. So uh, I wanted to share some some nuggets or principles of joy. I call it the blessings of God's joy. It is blessed to have the joy of the Lord. It is blessed to know that you have it, to know that he gave it to you, and to know that you're walking in it, no matter what. I said no matter what. So I want to share with them. So the joy of the Lord is associated with everlasting life. So we go to John. Chapter 3, verse 35 and 36. The joy of the Lord is associated with everlasting life. Did you know that? Well, we're going to find it here in John. Chapter 3, verse 35 and 36. And it reads as follows. The Father loveth the Son and have given all things into his hands. Hallelujah. I'll, I'll read that again because Jesus is Lord. The Father loveth the Son, and hath given all things into his hand. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life, and he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So if you believe in the Son, and you're going to rejoice in that, because that's the gift that God gave you. God gave you his Son. That's the joy right there. Oh, thank you, Lord. That's the reception of it. I thank you. And the Bible says, one sinner repenteth, the angels in heaven rejoice. So this is a celebration when someone gets born again. This is a celebration. I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about joining the church. I'm talking about receiving Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. That's the joy. <laughs> you, have, you have the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Amen. You've been translated out of the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son. You have God's blessings. You have God's will and promises. And he loves you. You got God's significance on your life. Amen. No more wondering who am I and who are the... God made you in his image and life. God loves you. Amen. Also, the blessings of God's joy. Uh, God wants you to be full of it. Did you know that? Let's go to John 16. Stay with John. Go to John 16, 24. God wants you to have full of joy. Be full of it. I mean, let, let it overflow, you know. And, and that could be uh, spontaneous. It could be spontaneous. Or it, and when you start reflecting on his goodness and mercy, it comes that way. But here is the will of God, John 16, 24. Amen. And it says here, Here to have ye asked nothing in my name, Ask and ye shall receive, that your joy may be full. So when we ask God, he wants you to come and ask him in faith and believing. It says, hitherto, Jesus said, have ye asked nothing in my name, in the name of Jesus, that is. 
It says, ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. God wants you to come to him. It's, it should be joy to come to him. It's, it shouldn't be you running and hiding and feeling like, oh God, oh God, you know, fear. It's faith that pleases God. It's you knowing who God is. God is love. It's a loving relationship. It's not based on works. It's based on relationship and love and faith in him. And we have some Christians believing like if I don't do this and I make a mistake here and now I'm going to feel condemned. But there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit. And God gives you grace to walk in the spirit and learn how to walk in the spirit. So why don't you walk in the spirit? Because in the spirit is life and peace. But God, you know, some people are uh, feeling God's got a big billy club and get ready to hit them because they were wrong or they did something wrong. But well, that's what Christ died on the cross for. So that you can know that he, that's what he died for. And so that you know, let him who stole from you, the devil, let him steal no more from you. Because now you live by, the gra you live by grace, the grace of God, grace and truth. And for by grace are you saved. It's not of any works that you've done. Through faith, it's the gift of God. At least any man should boast. It's the gift of God. Let's celebrate that. And then grow in the grace of God. Also, the joy of God is associated with being uh, delivered and also from evil spirits and salvation. So if we go to Acts. The joy of the Lord is associated with being joyful for people who get delivered. If someone gets delivered from evil spirits, it should be joy. I mean joy. Hallelujah. It should be looking down on them and being sad. It's a time to rejoice because they were bound, but Jesus set them free. Amen. And that's what this, why Jesus came. For this purpose, the Son of God came, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Because God don't want, God has compassion and he don't want people to be uh, jockeyed around and bullied around by evil spirits. So he sent Jesus to show us the way. He demonstrated us this is what you do. To whom many have received him, he gave them authority to become the sons of God. Amen. But in Acts chapter 8 verse 7 and 9. It reads as follows. For unclean, unclean spirits crying out with loud voices came out of many that were possessed with them. And many taken with palsy and that were lame were healed. And there was great joy in that city. That's a great joy for a sinner to repent and, and receive Christ, the prodigal son. And it's also great joy for people to be delivered and healed of evil spirits. And then also, if you go to Luke, uh, go back to Luke, uh, Luke chapter 15, verse 7, it reads as follows. I say, Jesus said, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. That's joy. That's joy when, when a sinner repenteth and come home. That's how God looks at it. That's how the angels, and that's what Jesus is teaching us. So if you know someone who haven't received Jesus, then that's why we need to tell them the gospel. We need to tell them that he came to set people free. Amen. And this gospel is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So also... The blessings of God's joy is associated to be like-minded, having the same love, and being on one accord. So that's why we need to have this joy working in us, because we, we mind the same thing, Christ Jesus. We, we understand the finished work, what he did was for all mankind, and, what he, and how much God loves us and cares for us. And uh, that means we're like-minded. We have the same love. The love of God is in us. It abounds in us through the Holy Ghost. And, and it helps us be on one accord. We rejoice 
when one sinner repents, all of us rejoice. Amen. But here it says in Philippians, let's go to Philippians here. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. Philippians 2 and 2, it says here, Fulfill ye my joy that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. The mind of Christ, one love, the love of God that shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Same love and being on one accord. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Amen. The body of Christ, the family of God. The church of the living God. Amen. On one accord. Amen. So I pray for unity in the body of Christ. That we love one another according to Christ. And that we be in union. And that we be united in that name which is above any other name. The name of Jesus. That's what's going to do it. If I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto him, Jesus says. And then finally, I'd like to share this scripture. The blessings of God's joy will help you conquer tribulations and circumstances. Because the Bible says, nay, through all these things, we're more than conquerors. So if we go to 1 Timothy, I mean 1 Peter, excuse me. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 8, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 8, it says, Whom having not seen ye love, and whom though thou uh, now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Receive, full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your soul. I'm read that again. That's good. That's, ooh, that's really good. It says that the trial, is that right? Yeah, let's go up above that. That the trial of your faith being more precious. Do y'all hear that? That the trial of your faith being more precious than of gold that perish. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Now that's a verse that I didn't write down, but it goes together. Or when you get a chance to read all First uh, Peter chapter 1, it'll bless you. And then it says, Eight whom having not seen, ye love. Having seen Jesus. In whom thou now Ye see him not yet believing, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy, amen, unspeakable and full of glory. I rejoice even though I haven't seen Jesus. I, I, Jesus, you know, people were saying he, hero, hero, hero. Jesus is my hero, amen. And I rejoice that he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother to me, amen. That I can call on him 24-7. Amen. That he's my salvation. He's my help. He's my rock. That's joy. That gives me great joy. Amen. So today, uh, conclusion of this message on the kingdom of God that, that says uh, it's not food and drink, but it's righteousness and peace. And joy in the Holy Ghost. And when you're walking in the kingdom. Or if you're living in the kingdom church. Because this message is to the church. And an open invitation. To those who don't have Christ as their Lord and Savior. It's the kingdom of God. And of his Christ. Is the good news. Of the message. That we bring into this world. The gospel. So be encouraged. To walk in God's righteousness. Amen. Not your own righteousness. And walk in God's peace. The peace that surpasses. And walk in God's joy. That's unspeakable and full of glory. And let it remain in you. And you're understanding the kingdom. You are beginning to understand the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. And how powerful and wonderful our Lord and Savior is Jesus Christ, who is the head of the church, the head of the body, 
and the head of all principality and power and dominion and might. His finished work so that we can live unto God and unto God be the glory. Till we meet again, may God richly bless you, shine his face upon you and give you peace, the peace of God, amen. And I've enjoyed being with you. Have a blessed day.